All right, now let's delve a little deep into solving these problems on SN1. Let's solve another problem. Let's give it a little simple initially. Now, question is same, like you have been given three substrates and you've been asking the rate of, you have been asked rate of reaction via SN1 mechanisms. Now the basic thing will be most of the time you don't have to really uh, when we d go into reaction mechanism the sol solvent will be the same and we have to consider different substrates in the same solvent so we keep solvent same all the time. We, you don't have to really judge between two different solvents. Considering solvents are the same you have living group same as well and the nucleophile in the sub solvent will also be the same so we just have to focus on the structure of the substrate and based on the structure of the substrate we have to intuitively guess which substrate will have higher rate of reaction now which substrate will have higher rate of reaction the the pathway to reach to the answer would be to decide on the RDS of each of the substrate now in the substrate in which RDS will be crossed most easily that substrate will have the highest rate of reaction and in the RDS in the first step of SN1 this living group goes off and you will have correspondingly three intermediates and based upon the stability of those three intermediates you will decide the ease with which the RDS would be crossed if you are having more stable intermediate then the energy level of that intermediate would be lesser and that lower energy level can be crossed more easily so uh, based upon the stability we will decide upon the RDS so in nutshell if you are getting the most stable intermediate that will give us the highest rate of reaction so if we can arrange them in the order of a stability that will be also that will also give us the order of rate of reaction so let's decide upon the rate of st uh, upon the order of stability now we have prepared ourselves to come to this juncture to decide the stability of different intermediates and for that we have studied different effects that actually decides the stability of different intermediates that includes aromaticity resonance hyperconjugation inductive effect and other effects like field effect cash effect that we have already seen now to start with we will first of all see resonance here do, there don't seem to be any resonance happening in any of the intermediate because in besides plus charge we don't have a electron rich species so electron will not be going into that empty orbital as such so resonance is out now we then move on in the order of precedency to hyperconjugation after resonance we comes hyperconjugation after hyperconjugation comes inductive effect now for hyperconjugation we will count the number of alpha hydrogen here the three alpha hydrogens alpha hydrogen means the hydrogen which is on the carbon adjacent to the carbon having plus charge we know these things so it will be quick and fast for us at this moment here we have three alpha hydrogens here we have four alpha hydrogens two at each alpha positions on both the sides so here you have three alpha hydrogen here we have four alpha hydrogen and here if you look again you have four alpha hydrogen because you have two on each side so if you go by hyperconjugation then B and C are more stable than A that means B and C will have greater rate of reaction than A this is owing to greater extent of hyperconjugation in B and C than in A now this is decided that B and C will have higher rate of reaction than A but to judge between B and C the extent of hyperconjugation is same is same in both B and C so based only upon hyperconjugation we cannot decide their re relative rate so we move on to the next important effect that is inductive effect now we will decide or we will look at inductive effect only when the answer is not supplemented by will is not provided by hyperconjugation or any other effect stronger than inductive effect now this is very important you always move down to different effects in order of their precedency we all got resonance first followed by hyperconjugation followed by inductive effect 
Now, based upon hyper conjugation, we are not getting the answer. Then we'll move on to inductive effect. Now, inductive effect. Here you have a plus charge on both sides. You have R group. R group are electron stabilizing. Have electrons have are are electron releasing group. So for a carbocation, they are a stabilizing. They have a stabilizing effect. Here too you have R groups. Now we have already seen this. I f I am reminding you again. If you have a higher if the size of the R group is large, then the if electron release effect of that large R group is greater. So effectively, there is stabilizing effect is higher. So here you have propyl on both the sides. Here we have ethyl on both the sides. Propyl being larger, having three carbons, will have greater electron releasing effect. That will fulfill the electron deficiency of the carbo carbocation to a greater extent. That's why this third carb uh, intermediate having propyl on both the sides will be relatively because of inductive effect more stable than B which have ethyl on both the sides. So the order this is based upon hyper conjugation and to judge between B and C relative rate we have to move on to inductive effect that gives the answer C greater than B greater than A. This, this is decided by inductive effect. Alright, so in SN1, whenever we are dealing with SN1, you have to bear this in mind. Actually, what we have to deal with is the stability of the intermediate, a uh, stability of the carbocation that has been formed as an intermediate during RDS. That will decide the rate because that is the toughest step to be crossed, and the reaction the, with the intermediate with which it is crossed most easily, that uh, that substrate will give the highest rate of reaction via SN1.